Hey guys, I'm so excited to be here. And uh, it's not because uh, there's too many people from too many countries here, because I think the atmosphere over the last couple of days has been very infectious. I've met people from government, startup companies, large companies, established organizations, and everybody has a common theme that I've seen, and it's the theme of wanting to learn more. And I think that's the essence of everything that everybody has said within these few days. It's about learning new things and using them to do something better. So, if you don't know anything about IoT, you're in the right session. If you're an IoT expert, you are in the right session. For me, technology is very personal. And I say that because it touches every aspect of my life. And if you think about it, it's touching your lives as well. Let's try and think of it in this way. There are global issues in the world that affect millions of people. 1.3 billion people in the world do not have basic health care, and that's a problem. And I feel personally responsible for it. I'm not the cause of it, but I know I have the capability of doing something about it. How? We'll see. In 2010, over 2,000 babies died of what is called a sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS. Or, for another fact, 663 million people, which is 1 in 10 people in the world, lack access to safe water. And these are global issues. And some of them might even be common in the communities that you guys are from. Did you also know that one third of the food we produce is wasted? That's staggering. One third of the food we produce is just wasted. It's gone. And over 415 million people in the world today have diabetes. And who isn't affected by the workers who are using their cell phones, they're on their smart devices while they are at work? And it's not only about work. It's about our own personal productivity. And these are issues that are common everywhere in the world. Everybody is facing these same problems. Here's another staggering figure. 1.3 billion people around the world do not have access to essential healthcare services, like really essential healthcare services. 1.3 billion people. And 5 billion people around the world do not have access to safe surgery. Now, these are issues that have a tremendous amount of impact on the world. As technologists, as leaders, as business people, as startups, I think it's our responsibility not to just think of our small little domain, but to think of problems, change, and impact from a global perspective. And this is why it matters. It matters because the world is becoming smaller. The world is becoming smaller, and global issues are now everybody's issues. Things that are affecting us here in Dubai are affecting people all over the world. And it's some of these things that I showed earlier. And I really believe that technology, innovation, and the ability to create change has a huge potential in us being to address these problems. So let's open up the doors and think of ourselves as problem solvers. Each of us individually can solve a problem and we can contribute to this. I'm here to talk a little bit more about the Internet of Things and what it really means and to demystify it a little bit. I do love buzzwords and I talk a lot about blockchain and Internet of Things and technology and cloud. I like talking about these things, but then many times you also want to simplify what they mean. The Internet of Things, just to summarize in a very short form, is three different things, or it could be categorized in a hundred different ways. But the essential item to remember it is that it's where we've enabled devices to give us information. Your cell phones are IoT devices in one way. Your smart cars are IoT devices in one way. 
The key thing about Internet of Things and the devices that power them or the devices that are or the sensors that are part of them is that they generate a lot of data. Every IoT device generates information that it's collecting. And it's this information that is key in being able to derive value from this device, from the system, or from that technology. I really believe that in the next 20 years, IoT will determine the quality of life for humanity. I really believe in it. And I think I want to sell this idea to you as well and convince you that IoT is something that we should embrace. For those of you who attended many other sessions or had some great conversations, you must have come across the idea of smart cities. We also have an entire event indoors about the future cities and how smart cities are coming together to provide so many different infrastructure elements, so many facilities to make the lives of the citizens better. Now, a smart city is very complex. And yesterday, somebody asked the question, what really makes a city smart? What is the level of smartness a city can have? And the simple answer is that there's no scale. We don't have an authority that regulates the smartness of cities and says, hey, you're 75% smart or you're 92% smart. No. I think that if your city is making smart choices, it's thinking about the future, it's addressing current and future problems, then it's a smart city. If your leaders, your administration, your governance is thinking about how to make the lives of citizens better, how to offer them different services, then it's a smart city. And the Internet of Things forms a core and a key part of that. Some of the elements of a smart city are better traffic lights, better temperature control, better logistics. You've got a brilliant metro here. It's part of the smart city. And so on and so forth. Here are some examples of smartness in general in a few different industries with respect to the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things can help us measure the flow of liquids, and I'm sorry to be technical, but it's so exciting because it affects you. It can measure the flow of liquid through a pipeline. It could be oil, it could be gas, it could be, I don't know, Coca-Cola. And it can tell us how those pipelines are doing over a period of time, a year, half a year. And as soon as you figure out, the sensors tell you that there's a problem in the pipeline, there is a crack developing because it can, it can sense that, you know that information way before the pipeline actually bursts. So you can send out your people to the field, do preventative maintenance, and the organization has saved a lot of downtime that would have affected so many other things. So that's the power of a very simple item with respect to Internet of Things in industry. So right now, we are in Dubai, and it's almost, I think, 3 a.m. in Toronto, Canada. That's where I'm from. And I have a Nest thermostat at home. I can literally log in from my cell phone, look at the temperature, and make sure that my baby is sleeping at the right temperature. If it's cold, I can turn it up a notch. If it's warm, I can turn it down a notch. I can also switch on the monitoring camera inside our home and see if everything is okay. Is somebody going to the fridge at night and trying to eat some food? No. But really, that's the power of technology. The world is becoming smaller, and we can do way significant amount of things with, with something that we could never imagine. And the Nest thermostat is an example of Internet of Things. Now, when you scale it up and you expand it to industry, large companies can use Internet of Things to control a wider area. They can control temp temperature, regulate uh, temperature within buildings, facilities, and so on and so forth. So it, it makes, ex expands and scales up. How many of you have a wrist healthcare device on you, like a Fitbit, a Garmin, Nuvi Care, something? Anybody has it on? I got one, two, three. That's it? Nobody from this side? I got more people. I have one, too. And this measures how many steps I take, 
it measures my heart rate, it measures a bunch of different things, a lot of which I never check, but some of which are very important for me. So my doctor has told me, you've got to take 12,000 steps every day because you're eating too much, you've got to trim that fat down a little bit. And this device actually helps me do that. At the end of the day, if my step count is 8,000, I have to go for that walk and make sure that I walk a few blocks so that I do those 12,000 steps. And the implications of this device are tremendous. Think about what we can do in the healthcare industry by a simple device like this, where it's constantly monitoring the health of patients and ensuring that they're doing the activities they're doing. This is just one tiny device. There's multiple others. So if you've had nothing to do with IoT, you're still trying to figure out what to do with IoT, I suggest you buy one of these bands and you start wearing it and you interact with it and there you are. You're in the IoT industry, okay? You're an active user. The Internet of Things also has tremendous amount of implications within the farming industry. When you talk about farms that are spread over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hectares, you want to be able to create efficiency in managing that farm. In managing that farm, there's a lot of time, effort, and resource required. You need labor who's going to do this manual work. And it's not only just about paying those people, but it's about creating efficiency within farms. Things like a smart tractor or agribots or survey drones can significantly reduce the amount of time you're using or utilizing to create that change or maintain your farm. It's taking you maybe 10 minutes to do something, to do a survey with a, with a drone that would previously take an hour or five hours. So start thinking from the perspective of efficiency. There's also a thing called texting cows. Literally, I'm telling you, cows are texting. And farmers are using these cows to text them about their health condition. Cows are embedded with a sensor that measures their health stats, their blood pressure, their temperature, and it's sending farmers information if a cow is not feeling well because they're spread out potentially over, you know, over a grazing field and so on and so forth. And that's how we are utilizing or we plan to utilize IoT within farms. And this has implications worth millions and billions of dollars worldwide. Farmers have, three, have seen 2 to 3% yield increase with, by using these devices and over 10% water savings. In places such as the Middle East, where water is very scarce, this is a tremendous amount of uh, savings with respect to water. Now, a lot of us, uh, or a lot of people, are affected by careless driving. I just got a ticket for $500 because I had my cell phone in my hand, and this happened in Canada, and the cop said, well, careless driving. But it could have gotten more dangerous. I could have hit somebody, and it's very common for us to have our cell phone in our hands and drive. Now, the challenge is that sometimes the repercussions are very harsh. In 2009, and these stats are from, uh, from, from North America, there were over 5,000 people killed and 450,000 people were injured because of careless driving. And it's costing about $230 billion a year just because of distracted driving. Now, cars that are enabled with sensors that somehow monitor careless driving or cars, and you might have heard, that can measure the amount of alcohol in the breath of a person who's about to drive and just freeze the car. That's what we're talking about. It's a very small technology, but it has a tremendous amount of implication. And it all boils down to one thing, through all these different examples that I've shown. It's just one thing common between all of these things that I told you about, and it's value creation. How do we create value from technology? 
How do we simplify a problem? And if you really want to be innovators, you really want to be somebody to create change, you've got to simplify the bigger problem into a smaller problem. You've got to simplify and start small and think about how do I add value. The moment you start making it more complex, it's where you've lost the plot. So, I have literally got the next steps for you to do this, to create value and to create change so that you can be contributors in solving some of the world's biggest problems that we face as a global community. These are problems affecting the environment. These are problems affecting people who are displaced by poverty, hunger, problems of healthcare in communities that do not have access to healthcare. And I think as innovators, you should think about creating change for these broader communities. And that's where your vision will multiply hundredfold. Now the problem is, we as human beings have a very short attention span. And that attention span has reduced in the last few years. As of 2013, according to Wired magazine, we have an attention span of eight seconds. That's all we have. A goldfish has an attention span of nine seconds. So how are we going to really create this big change in the world and, and create this massive amount of influence and save people and, and, and save people who are, who are, who are in impoverished conditions? It's impossible. Without leveraging technology and without leveraging the right mindset, it's impossible. So I'm going to give you a methodology, a very simple methodology you can follow. And you can call it the EPIC methodology, EPPC. And I'll tell you what the next E is. The EPIC methodology is about the essential steps you need to take to create that change. And you can apply this to anything that you do. Step number one, evaluate. You've got to figure out what exactly are you doing. And since we are in the startup forum, You've got to look at your business model to see if it's sustainable. It shouldn't be a hobby, but it should have a proper business model. Is your revenue model fixed? Are you doing a subscription model? Is this a one-time sale model? What kind of a model are you putting behind the product, the solution that you're creating? And you've got to look at your customer needs. Does everything align together or not? So that's your evaluation stage. You've got to be able to plan the strategy of how to produce that product or service? And what is your strategy for go-to-market? And you're talking about the regional market, the local market, the specific market, the, the vertical. How are you planning to roll out your product or service? Is it in stages? Is it a one-time? You've got to figure that out and as a separate item. And what can you automate? How can you leverage technology that will make it faster for you to be able to do these items? and to address the planning stage, the evaluation stage. There's tons of tools you can use. I think the third step is very important, and this is where you prove that your idea actually works. It's about doing a pilot. It's about doing a smaller test. Do a test with your customers, with a small set of your potential customers, or create partnerships and leverage those partnerships and alliances to do a prototype that you can use and prove to the, to the world. And the last step is create. This is where you actually go to market. This is where you actually go out and sell your product, and so on and so forth. And these are four steps. Now, in order to make sure that you're succeeding within these four steps and using this methodology, you've got to perfect one thing, which is execution. Execution across the board in every level is the most important step you can ever take. And you have to make sure that you're executing with perfection because it not only affects your plan, but it could affect the lives of millions of people that you're trying to address, whose needs you're trying to address. So, to conclude, I think we can start creating massive change in the world if we have the right mindset. 
and we can enable unlimited value, but you've got to start thinking from a value creation perspective and come out of your small little uh, world if you are trapped in it, but think bigger. There's no limitation on thinking big. If you have knowledge of something, then you are responsible for creating change through that knowledge. And help create a better world, a better community, a better city, just because you have the capability of doing that. And as technologists, as professionals, I think we all have that capability. With that thought, thank you so much, and I hope you have a great session. Thank you.